Hi, welcome to another episode of Hot Takes. Very quick one here about housing. We all know that the Growler wants 300,000 houses or 370,000 houses a year now, uh, and it isn't going to happen. Um, and very quick, I'll just go very quickly. Um, the problem with housing is, and I think this is the main problem they have with this Labour government, is they don't understand the construction industry. They're saying, because they seem to think houses are like widgets, you see, they seem to think if you build more of them, the economies of scale come in and they get cheaper. And this is a very common fallacy. And anyone who works in construction knows that that argument is a load of bollocks. Because firstly, you're not dealing with widgets. You're not dealing with small things that can be mass produced. You're talking big things that need massive capital outlays. Number one. Number two, you're dealing with limited resources. There's only so many bricks that can be produced. There's only so much timber that can be managed or imported at a time. There's only so much staff. There's only so many tradesmen. And of course, there's only so much land. And then you've got to look at timescales because the time it takes to go in, clear, get planning, do this, change, whatever. And on top of that, you have to constantly monitor costs against profit. Because at the end of the day, these companies, if they don't make a profit, they ain't going to do it. And of course, ultimately then, that all leads to a price. And you're thinking, if you build more houses, the prices will fall. And I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, if that was the case, you don't think builders would be building way more houses than they're building now. So why aren't they? Well, it's as I say. That argument, it's a load of bollocks. For you see, there is only so much land. And as you buy land to develop, that land then, what remains, is rarer. It's scarcer. And what happens when there's a scarce resource? The cost goes up. And the cost of that land has to be incorporated into the sales cost of the house. And as you use all these supplies and bricks and mortar and whatever, and roof tiles, and all of a sudden, boom, 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 there's a shortage. And so to make more, you have to bring them in. But when there's a shortage, the cost goes up. And that rising cost has to be reflected in the sales price of the house. And you only have so many brickies, chippies, sparkies, roofers, plumbers. And they're all busy on other sites, aren't they? Because everyone's building. But you can encourage them to come to your site by offering them more money. And that's fine. But that money that you're offering them has to be incorporated in the cost of the house. And so to build 300,000 houses, which incidentally is impossible, would actually make every house cost more than they cost now. That's the nature of the construction industry. This is why it's a bad idea. This is why the ginger growler sits there going, oh, we're going to build 370,000 houses. And doesn't understand that you're not. And certainly doesn't understand that even if you did, the cost of those houses would be so prohibitively high, no one could afford to buy them. And no company, no sane building company is going to go in and put all that capital into houses they cannot sell. Because that way lies madness and bankruptcy. So forget any idea of 370,000 houses a year being built. It won't happen. Now, there is this see, this, 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 this website. It's a, an organisation called Generation Rent. Now, they have said, and this is where it's genius, because they've, they've got it. They've got it. Um, and this whole thing here is a table of data. I'm not going to bore you with all the data if I show you this. They've got the website there, they've got all this data that they've done, and it, you know, and it's quite in depth, it's quite a, an academic study that they've done. But we're not going to go through what that's here saying, uh, you know, through that very dry academic stuff. I'm going to give you this in a, a sort of an easy to chew way. What they're saying is that the approach taken by the governments, both at Westminster and, the, uh, and in Holyrood, the SNP government in Holyrood, are entirely the wrong way of dealing with rents. Now, we've seen you can't build 300,000 houses a year because, you you know, it's just physically impossible. Can't be done. 
And, the, and the, what they're saying is if there's a lot more rental properties available, then rents drop slowly. Rents drop. As more and more uh, rental properties come to the market, rents drop more easily. And they've said and agree that the only way to do that is to stop attacking landlords. Now, this generation rent is a pro-tenant group. So they've got they've got no reason to say landlords good, let's help landlords, unless unless they know that to benefit tenants, you've got to stop attacking landlords. And that's exactly what they're saying. So all this, remove this, remove that. Let's stop landlords doing that. Let's make landlords pay this. Oh, everything you do that makes being a landlord harder drives more of them out of the market, meaning fewer rental properties, meaning the rents rise because they're a scarce commodity, meaning more homelessness because the people who can't afford houses before, just because there's fewer rental places doesn't mean they can afford them now. And this madness of building more houses in order to make them cheaper that won't, especially when you've got a million immigrants a year, legal or otherwise, that all need to be housed. It's crazy. The government don't get it because the government are mental. So what do the governments do? What they're actually calling is for the government to not carry on attacking landlords, but to ease it, to make being a private landlord easier to encourage people who have got the capital to go in and buy a home, to go in and buy a home and rent it out to someone who can never buy a home. They get it. They actually get it. This is a tenants group saying to the government, will you just listen to the experts? Listen to people who know what they're talking about. Don't pretend you do. Just because you're a politician, doesn't mean you know jack about anything. And they certainly don't know the construction industry and they don't know the rental industry. Sure, take away the paperwork, allow companies to build. Don't impose wanky artificial targets that will never be made. Because if, like I say, if house builders could build more, they would. Why aren't they? Because they build to the peak profit market. No point making the houses more expensive if you can't sell them. And so that's what they do. They pitch to where the market can hold them. It's it's a dynamic equilibrium. At the same time, the government is making it harder to be a landlord. And so while houses are being built for sale, they aren't turning into rental properties because nobody wants to go into that market anymore. Make it easier. Watch, if you made it easier, more people would buy to rent. The rental market would flourish. Rents would drop. Tenants would have more money in their pocket that they could spend in the greater community. The whole economy would pick up and everybody would be happier. But that, of course, would take brains and common sense. And this is the Labour Party. They have neither. They just have political ideology. Thanks a lot. Bye.